Hey, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Got a fun one for you today. It is February 28th, 2022. We're gonna do some frost seeding today with an electric spreader on a John Deere 3025V. This is an announcement too. We are just getting kicked off as a Northwoods Whitetail food plot seed dealer, all right? so. Check out our website for more information, but if you are looking for food plot seed, if you're a big time deer hunter, turkey hunter, all that kind of thing, we are gonna be able to help you out very soon. So we're gonna show you guys a lot of different plantings this year, the brassicas, the glooms, clovers. There's a huge screening variety that they have as well. It grows up to 14 foot tall in just one summer. I can't wait to get that planted out here too. So a lot of good stuff in store this year. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, adding wheel spacers can make a big difference. Boro Spacers are made in America. They have a lifetime warranty. If you'd like to get more information, we'll put a link down below on where you can buy them. Now we've shown these electric spreaders on smaller tractors, my 1025R in particular, but this is electric, all right? There's just a category one three-point hitch, so any compact tractor, the subcompacts, all the way through the big 4720 if you want to, will work just fine. The only other connection besides that three-point hitch is gonna be some gator clips for your battery, or you can rig it to put into a, a cigarette or a 12-volt lighter if you want to, but very easy. It's gonna have a variable control and so what that allows you to do is control the spread pattern all right so you can go all the way out I think it's 40 plus feet wide if you want to or if you want a really narrow path you can do that too so you have a lot of flexibility there that you can't get with most PTO driven spreaders that's one of the big benefits oh and if you hate dealing with PTO shafts there's no PTO shaft here to worry about at all. It's electric and three point hitch, that's it. So this spreader here is good for a lot of dry granular materials, all right? So your seed, your fertilizer, other soil amendments, um, even ice melt pellets, not salt, okay? And not sand either. So it's not designed for either of those or ag lime, the big wet kind of sticky ag, but if you have the dry ag pellets, those will work in here too. So if you think about something pelletized like a fertilizer, it could be uh, a pesticide, an herbicide, it could be gypsum we put through here too. A lot of different things, plus your seed and your ice melt pellets. You have a lot of applications. You can use it essentially year round then. So this thing's very lightweight, weighs well under 100 pounds, easy to operate. You have your control here. You can screw this uh, and loosen it or tighten it back up just to go to the right setting uh, for the quantity or the volume of seed or fertilizer material, I guess, that's gonna flow through there. You can open and close that gate with a handle right here that's just right behind the operator station. So if you just wanna close it off while you're in transport mode, you can easily do that. But that's really just about it. It's very easy to operate, very easy to use. And again, good for a subcompact all the way up to a big four series. All right, so we're back out here another day. I realized I forgot my clover seed, so we're gonna go ahead get our seed loaded up in here to get our frost seeding done. Now, not every type of seed is ideal for frost seeding. Legumes, clovers, grasses are really good. Now, this has a few things in it that probably aren't ideal. Uh, the forage peas, the oats may not be 100% ideal for frost seeding, but we're gonna throw this mixture down. This is a soil builder blend, so we're gonna put it on some of our existing food plots, see if we can build up that organic matter over there. But then we're also gonna mix in plenty of clover seed as well. Got quite a few bags here. We're gonna do a couple other areas too, but this is the Northwoods Crimson Clover. We are just getting onboarded as a Northwoods Whitetail food plot seed dealer, okay? So that means we're gonna start stocking their product here pretty soon. So clovers, brassicas, uh, turnips, sorghum, uh, food plot screen varieties, all sorts of stuff. You'll have to check out more information on our website here pretty soon. We'll be able to sell and ship, or if you wanna pick it up here in Kalamazoo, you can do that as well. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you would like to see more, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you own a tractor, or maybe you're in the market for a tractor, we can help out with tractor attachments. We sell and ship them all over the country every day of the week. Visit us at goodworkstractors.com. Now I'm by no means an expert on frost seeding, but I know a lot of guys have been doing this for years and years. If you've got some input to share, we'd love to know about it by leaving a comment down below. But here in Michigan, this is the right time of year. It's March, what is it, March 3rd now? March 3rd now, so we're kind of in that sweet spot. They say around 45 days or so, give or take, before the uh, grass growth really starts to take off in your lawn is about the ideal time to frost seed, but I've heard guys frost seeding all winter long at any point or even late fall, uh, early winter, and having success that time too. Now, typically germination rates are a little bit lower if you're frost seeding compared to a traditional planting process, so you may wanna go a little bit heavier on your seeding rate, but it's a very non-invasive, very easy way. There's no tilling required, all right? They call it a lazy man's way to seed, but you just get your spreader out, there's no plow 
plowing, there's no tilling, you're just putting that seed on the ground. You typically don't want a very deep snow because if it melts off quickly, it could wash away the seed. So you either want just a little bit of snow or no snow like we have here. You're taking advantage of those freeze thaw cycles and you can see it going on right here where we're standing. Uh, just an hour ago, this was very hard frozen ground as the sun's come out and warmed it up. It's softening a little bit. The high is only 33 degrees today, but it's just enough to loosen everything up, let it work in the ground a little bit, but it's doing its magic slowly. You're not gonna see it happen, but just as it warms up during the day, cools down at night, the ground contracts, it expands, it does its thing, the water seeps down and pushes everything down in there. It's a good way to get a jump start on your season. All right, we're all mixed up and ready to go. So we're gonna head over to the food plot and get this spread and let nature do its thing.
All right, it's as easy as that right there, folks. A nice late winter, early spring project for you. You get out in the fresh air. Spring fever is kicking in. One thing I want to mention though, if you're planting multiple varieties of seed like what we were doing today, you do want to be aware of the fact that when you're shooting that seed out in the, in the spreader, not every type or every variety is going to go to the same distance. You know, some of the heavier seeds or bigger or smaller seeds are going to go different distances. So be aware of that this is not precision planting that we're doing out here. This is just to get some um, soil building nutrients that we're going to knock down and then seed our fall plots into late summer, build up the overall organic matter and the soil health and something we'll probably do for several years to come. Now we sell these ag spray electric spreaders. Okay, you saw today we did smaller passes initially and then I had enough left over. I like to do double coverage and so I opened up the gate uh, a little bit wider and then increase the spread pattern as well. I went almost to, to the full 10 speed on there, so it really shot the seed out far just to get good coverage over everything. Make sure we didn't leave any bare spots or undercovered spots. Again, you wanna go potentially a little bit heavier if you are frost seeding because it's not gonna have as high of a germination rate typically, but I'm feeling pretty good right now. We got this one under the belt. I do have to get to the other side of our property where we cleared out a small pocket of land as well and do some seeding there too, but we're just getting started this year, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you tag along. And if you're looking for something like this spreader, maybe something for the front end loader, grapple, forks, a new bucket, whatever you need, we can help. We sell and ship all over the country. Visit goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.